As an Irish person, I absolutely understand there's limited I'm allowed to say on this, but I am allowed to talk about factual history. I'm allowed to correct disinformation, so I'm going to. Y'all know the thing black people do when they look at each other and... You ever wonder where that came from? In 1919, Navy veterans spread a whole bunch of disinformation about black communities, riled up a whole bunch of veterans and people that wanted to be veterans and went and literally started violently murdering black community members. And law enforcement was wholly in on it. As a result, black men coming home from war taught their communities how to organize into micro militias, aka gangs. They were so effective at unifying their communities and organizing that this red summer absolutely died out and white people running home for fear of their lives. And as a reward, Jim Crow laws were put into play, where if a black person even talked to another black person, it was considered organization. And we know what happened next. Hell, this is even the root of why four black people can't ride in a car together without a cop wanting to shoot it up. Learn up. As from regular people and on the media and in TV and movies that uh, African American dads just don't stick around. And you might have heard this, in fact, not just from conservatives, from liberals as well. Well, it turns out that is just another myth of American politics. So here's the thing, there is some uh, information out there, statistics that make it seem like that is true. And that is what a lot of this belief is based on. The fact that uh, the CDC said back in 2013, that in nearly 72% of births to non-Hispanic black women, the mothers were unmarried. And uh, that sort of information is used to underlie basically like everything that hypothetically the government could do to benefit this population. The answer is the dads just aren't around, the families are split up, they're not actually doing anything. Although when you actually look into the day to day interactions of African American dads with their kids, they are not just meeting other groups, they are in fact exceeding them. Now let's bring up this chart and you're gonna see examples of this. So um, the, on the left you have fathers living with their children, on the right fathers not living with their children. Now how involved is each group in these different categories? So in terms of they fed or ate meals with their children daily, by five points, black dads are actually more likely to do that than white dads and more likely than Hispanic dads. In terms of bathing their kids, again, significantly more likely. That is, they're just barely beaten out and playing with children <laughs> to white dads, but 0.5, probably margin of error, more likely to read to their children daily. Those are the ones actually living with their children. But the criticism is often is the issue is that they're just not living with their children. But you see on the right, even the black dads not living with their children are again more likely to actually do these activities, in some cases fairly more likely um, than the, the white and Hispanic dads are. So it seems like if we're gonna continually say that the problems in this community is that they're just not around, we should probably have to square that with this data from regular people and on the- We couldn't get married, it was illegal. Do you know black people still had ceremonies under the the chance of them being whipped and beaten. They still believed in being married to each other, knowing that they could get sold, their children would be sold. But they still believed in trying to create a family. Today, no one's stopping us from having families, but us. Now we don't believe in fathers because what they did was they told the women, first off, we have this thing called a feminist movement. Well, the feminist movement was white women saying that their men are oppressing them and they couldn't work and they wanted to work. Well, black women never had that problem because black women have been working since slavery. They were walking out there with cotton on their back too. <laughs> so nobody stopped them from working. But for some odd reason, black women decided to join the white women because of how much they love and in love with the white women and want to be like them. Because I can't blame them. Women, white power. We all know it. The more money we get, the more women we get. That just happened. Money, power, spent. Exactly. So the white man had the most power. So I understood why the black woman lusted out. She wanted to be in position to where the white woman was. So she wanted to join the stuff that the white woman does. As a matter of fact, if you look at it back in the early 2000s, what was the number one show that black women like watch? The uh, early 2000s? Um, I'm thinking the 90s, I'm thinking Sister, Sister, Family Matters. Oh, Friends. No, Scandal. Scandal? Oh, okay. Scandal was about a black woman who was working for a white man who was married to a white woman. And the white man was the president of the United States. And every black woman, they would have scandal third or whatever day it come on. They would get together and have watch parties to see this black woman. And I asked the black woman, I said, why do y'all like this show so much? She's the president's side piece. Every black woman said the same thing. They really love each other though, society keeping them away from each other. Black women honestly believe white men are lusting after them. And the only thing stopping them is this 
magical wall that says, can't be with this black woman. So that show had all these black women watching it. Now, imagine, had the president been black and his wife was black, but his side chick was white, how long do you think that show would have stayed on TV? Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. Canceled. <laughs> canceled. It had been canceled oh, within a week. So we have this situation where they knew that black women wanted to be in a certain position. And black women, I'm, I hate to tell you this, black women hate black men. Let me tell you why. Tell us. See, black women do a whole lot of things to try to change how they look. Weave, perm, just everything to look different. Look at their pictures. They lightening them. They doing all kinds of stuff to make up, to change their nose, their contour and stuff. Yeah. They doing all these things to change who they are. Now, if you look at my pictures when I was 9, 12, 15, I look the same. <laughs> you look at their pictures... All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, the Elsberry Millstone. And Sad Takes Your doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. Firstly, Yahweh's name, Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name, Ba in Ha the Sham name. Yahweh Shai is the name of the begotten Son, and Rechah Kodash means Holy Spirit, literally translated Spirit Holy, Rechah Spirit Kodash Holy. And, um, yeah, man, Esau is completely against us. Everything he is, everything about this system is against us. And, and he's used, and it's the curses, you know, and he's used, um, you know, Esau is crafty. He's even gotten our, our women against us, which in turn fucked up whole generations, man. No, that's why I, I, the, the, the youth right now is so degenerate because of Esau craft, man. And the, the, the woman who's, who start the, that started the whole feminism movement, the Edomite woman, is a CIA, was a CIA agent. So keep that in mind. That was a CIA agent. You know, I forget her name. You know, you can look it up. And um, all three of those videos... Just proved the point that Esau is against us. He's done, like the scriptures say, this is um Psalms 64 and, and 5. Now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start at one. Psalm 64 and 1 to the chief musician, the Psalm of David. Hear my voice, O power, and my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Have me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. All right. And Malachi 1 and 4, 2 Thessalonians, Isaiah 14. Let's know who the wicked is. Let's know who Lucifer is, that king of Babylon. All right. Psalms 137. Let's know that the king of Babylon and this, the new Babylon, mystery Babylon, the daughter of Babylon is Edom. Revelation, Babylon is the last kingdom to rule. Lamentations, Second Esdras, and other scriptures, Isaiah 63, you know, etc., which Isaiah 63 precepts Revelation. Let us know that Edom would be the last kingdom to rule. Edom is mystery Babylon. And that's the wicked. All right. Lucifer is not talking about some, some left hand angel. No, man. Read the chapter. It's plain. All right. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot the arrows, even bitter words. All right. So they speak against Israel. All right. And not only that, you know, they. um They set up a system and laws that's completely against us. We're going to get, you know, scripture to prove that. All right, but here we go. Esau's pushed this narrative and, and, and set up a system to make sure niggas stay at the bottom. But not only that, that light is only shined on negativity when it comes to mentioning the nation of Israel, but, more, but mostly the males of Israel. 
And our women have been used as a tool to push this agenda further. They they advance our women more and then say all these niggas ain't shit. But meanwhile, everything that they say about niggas simply it's not it's not the case. Alright, yes there's bad you know, bad fish, but it's not the case. Alright? And that clip of those numbers with the black fathers was through the spirit. I mentioned that Saturday and then I have the data. I mentioned this through the spirit, just the observation, growing up in the hood and seeing black fathers fight to be around their sons. And when they can't be around their sons, it's the woman with this mindset, you know, this independent shit or out of spite. She mad that the man and slept around. Now she's going to use the son as a, the child as a weapon. Keep the children away from the father. And then we'll play victim and say the father's not around. She don't want to be around. Meanwhile, this man tried to be there. But a lot of the times what I saw was the fathers in the picture. You know, I saw the fathers there. But they pushed this narrative. The, uh, he, the father didn't step up. So this other man did, you know. They shaming you niggas to be stepfathers. Meanwhile, this damn woman is a demon. All right? Um, in fact, before I did this lesson, I was talking to my mother. I was on the phone with her, you know, just checking on her and stuff. And um, she asked me, somehow I came up with what I was finna do, and I thought I finna do this lesson, and I told her the topic, and we started talking about it. And she said she realized that, she realized that too, some years back she had realized that, thinking about her growing up and all this stuff. But then the conversation took an interesting turn, because I would start telling like, you know, yeah, I, I remember I asked you before, I remember even my situation. But my father that I didn't know him at first because I remember the first time I met my father's mother, which then in turn, I was able to meet my father. So for a couple of years, I didn't know my father, but I remember that interaction. <laughs> and I probably was three, three years old, which is crazy. I remember it. I described it to her. And she said something heavy. Um, that the, the, that narrative was pushed so in her mind, it wasn't spite towards my father. It was the narrative is pushed that you a strong, black, independent woman. She got other women around her, her mother, her sister. All right. With this same mindset, because this is what Esau pushes. You have your feminism. Be strong. You don't need a man, which in turn, it really teaches you to hate men. All right. Like Thomas Sardin might have said at the end of that video. And, you know, it, it was just crazy how she came to that realization and told me and said all that. I wish I remember exactly how she said it, but essentially uh, um, that narrative is pushed and then it can put these women in this mindset, we in the mission this to go out there and I'll just, because that's what she said, she's going to just raise me her own. That's what she was just thinking. Not, he didn't want to be that. She just said, well, I don't, I don't need him. I'm going to just do this myself because that's what was told to her. But her sister, you know, she, you know, whatever, her sister and her mother's putting her in, my grandma and my auntie. And then what society tells you. And, you know, I uh, ended up telling her, you know, I was talking to my cousin. And I was saying, you know, my Uncle Richard was very important because him being around kept that feminine spirit away from us. All right. But she but she even acknowledged the fact that that narrative is a false narrative. And what she, and essentially it's dangerous because it puts you in that mindset. I can do this on myself. Fuck this nigga. Talk shit to this nigga. And then turn you destroying your children. But who taught you these things? Who set up feminism? You, you, your desire and lust to be with, to be with Esau you know, and be, be accepted with Esau has destroyed whole generations, man. But ultimately, Esau is a crafty fucking devil, man. He pushes this 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 shit that keeps us in, in a bad light. Then he pushed poison to our people, get them to go off. Then shine the light on the fact they're going off. And it keeps the cycle just going, man. End of the day, Esau was the problem. The death Esau Edom is the fucking problem. The Lord is gonna take away the, the the cancer, man. Let me keep going. If they may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly they shoot at him and fear not. 
They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say who shall see them and snares his traps. Esau set these traps up. So meanwhile, on social media, you see niggas and, and bitches arguing back and forth. Which this the curses, but Esau set this shit up. And he's, he's sitting back rubbing his hands like Birdman. Oh, I love him. Like Smith, is he loving a plan come together? It's just pure hatred, man. To set some shit up to where, hey, look, everybody knows about Reaganomics. The war on drugs. The nigga, the, the Edomite, the cracker with the cocaine, if he get caught with all, with all this cocaine, slap on the wrist, probation, whatever. A nigga get caught with three crack rocks, but you use cocaine to make crack. I don't know the fucking recipe, right? <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> so like, my human is a little different, right? But um, you it, it takes cocaine to make crack. So three rocks each. I think each rock used minimum ten years or some shit. I don't know the fucking numbers. Which is considerably a less a less amount of the actual cocaine. How's the motherfucker got the cocaine getting less time than the motherfucker got the off product of it? It's cut with other shit in it. It's, it's lessened. Yet you get more time for it because that was what niggas had because it was cheaper. The cocaine is the pure and that's what the crackers had. So the shit is all against us. Every nigga use the phrase, the system, when they say the system failed us, and then niggas will say, well, no, the system that failed us done what it's designed to do. Yet you still hold on to Esau. You can't acknowledge this man is against us and still want to fucking be accepted by him. Return to our power, man. You will never be accepted by your lovers. They are against us. These heathens, these nations, that's who your lovers are, Israel. All right, you want to fall after them so fucking much, you will never be accepted by them, man. This whole shit is built against us, man. Return to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Return to the ancient ways. This is uh, 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 Jeremiah. Let me do it this way. Oh no, I, I messed. I, I think fucking app. Okay, I made a mistake. They changed the whole phrase. Eighteen fifteen. This is Jeremiah eighteen tenth. When I want though. Jeremiah 6 is Jeremiah 6. Jeremiah 6, 16. Yep. Call all of you. Y'all me outside. Thus say the howl, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we would not walk therein. Also, I said, watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said we would not hearken. So they don't want to listen, man. They, 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 they know this shit is full of shit here. We're at the fucking bottom. All right? They shine a light on our negativity. Why is niggas rapping about murder and, and adultery and all just violence and wickedness? Why are they getting million dollar deals? Because Esau want to make sure a negative light is placed upon us as Israelites, man. They wet their tongue and they sharpen it. A trap that Esau has set and niggas have fallen into, all right? And then Esau was shining light on that fact that you're doing this shit, man. And you know it's bullshit. Yeah, you fucking love it, man. Return to the ancient paths. This devil is against us and it ain't never going to... Always been against us, always will be against us. So he's taking out the fucking earth, man. Return to the ancient ways, man. You can't say that this man is a d the devil or this system is against us and still hold on to his way of life. Return to the ancient ways. This, this, this shit is going to kill you. All right? Flat out. This shit is going to kill you. All right? This is... um. Micah 2, 
and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sore destruction. Flee the shadow of this world. All right? The, the, the Western mindset, the Babylonian way, this system is clearly against us. And you can't sit there and, and acknowledge that, that we don't get justice in this place, that this system is broken and this, this and that. Systematic racism. They love throwing that phrase out there. If it's systematic racism, why are you still trying to be part of this system? Re repent and return to the ancient ways, man. Only way out of this hell is the Lord, man. It's back in Psalm 64 and 6. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So Esau was a mad scientist, man. He put together a lot of shit to get us to be this low. But our father, Yahweh, all right, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, in the name Yahweh Shai, you know, or, or, or Yahweh, you know, through Yahweh Shai has done these things, man. Has uh, put this word out. So, like, let me make sure I complete this sentence right. Has put this word and his spirit out to call us back to him, to call us back to our way, to, to, to the search of our fathers, Job 8 and 8. So we don't have to be stuck here falling after this devil. And just getting fucking destroyed. No, th this devil is going down. If you hold on to this devil, you're going to go down with him. Because at this point, ain't no excuse. Because everybody, this woke generation, woke this, woke that. Everybody got this, uh, got enough information to realize this man ain't fucking right. That all, even even that uh, that Irish guy, which he's an Israelite man, he's a nigga. He just looks like that, you know, because Jake fuck heathen women. It happened. And sometimes we look like our heathen mothers. But the bloodline and, and your, your lineage goes to the father. So he's an Israelite. But even he had to explain how, no, you can't just say, Nick, because that was a response to a comment. The comment is on the screen. You rewatch it. You can't just say black people didn't build up their communities. No. They shit got destroyed. Every single time. Esau found a way to take it down. Because he's the devil, man. It's the curses. But Esau was the tool used to do it, man. Because he's the devil. It's Daniel 7, 25. This man is against us. It's Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. So if the not far, main thing he going to do is take take away the real image, take away the name. He put his image up, Job 9.24, the wicked put their image up, all right? Took away the Lord's, uh, uh, what, what, his righteousness, hid that, hid his name, all right? And shall work out the saints of the Most High, who are the saints, the Israelites, all right? Read Psalms. One, the word saint is the word kodash in Hebrew, which means holy. Who are, who's the holy seed? Israel. It said, I have severed you from other people. All right? So they wear us out. Everything about this place is just to beat us down to the ground. And they'll even use our women to make sure they accomplish that. Because if the women, if, the, if they got the whole, if they got hold of the women and can separate the fathers, what the scriptures say? Well, let me get it. So rock three and nine for the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations so they can get, you know, he was talking about the reproach of, of a mother, man. All right. But they can get the, uh, uh, these women to follow after them and to be a curse to their children. All right. That destroy all the whole foundations. Now look what we get. Degenerates, man. Because the father ain't there to, to because they, they got to Eve to, to make sure that they think that they can be just independent and raise these successful and this and that children. Meanwhile, our children are degenerates, man. Low morality, sodomites, harlots. As the mother saw as a daughter, whores. 
There's no other way to call it. Our women are just far gone, man. No one values virginity anymore. No one values modesty anymore. Discretion. All right? Madness, man. So now we hear where we at. All right, back to Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall work out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. So now what's looked at as being right is wrong shit. And, and what's looked at as being wrong is things are actually right. All right, they have killed masculinity, man. All right, they've killed morality. They killed judgment. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. So this ain't going to last. Esau will go down. And whoever holds on to him, you're going to go down with him. Now was the time to repent. All right. Uh, in fact, let me grab that. This is Acts 17.30. And the times of this ignorance, the most high winked at Slaku. And the times of this ignorance, the most high winked at. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Now was the time to repent because the Lord is coming to cut this disease off. All right. The Lord is coming to cut this disease called Esau off the earth, man. This is uh, Sirach. Thirty and eight, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So this kingdom is never gonna. It was never gonna last, man. It's too wicked. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than the covetous man, for such an one set his own soul to sell. Because while he liveth, he cast away his bowels. The physician cutteth off a long disease, and he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. So Edom's kingdom will not last, man. He has to, he has to be judged for all these things, man. He's completely built the system that's contrary to the Israelites. It's contrary to our way of life. All right. It's fucking is 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 actually it's physical as well. That's why they make sure we get the uh, uh the lowest grade of food in our neighborhoods. We have food deserts. All right. Hormonal imbalances. Malnutrition. Chemicals that play on your fucking brain. This it, this is truly hell, man. This devil has to go. This is hey, the cancer can't got to cut out the body. Esau got to get taken down, man. He's literally built everything against us. All right. Literally. And of course, you know, of course he did. He's the devil. You know, this is uh, Ezekiel. But it's cool. He's going he to lose his... Uh, his rulership. This is Ezekiel 25. Am I tripping? Ezekiel 35. Oh, I did it again. Yeah, this is 35. Ezekiel 35 and... um. One, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and uh, Edom is Seir. Okay? 
I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by perpetual hatred. Everlasting. All right? Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time their iniquity had an end. So instead of letting us actually go, you know, Babylon, Persia, they gave us the command to go back to Israel and, you know, rebuild the wall. Esau ain't do that. Hell no. They tricked us to think we was free and then set up a whole system that fucks us over. <laughs> they allowed them to get away with murder. Literally allowed them to get away with murder, but now the Lord sees it. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Sierra most desolate, and cut off from him that passeth out, and him that returneth. So what's left for you, Edomites? It's judgments, man. All right, it's judgments, man. You, you, you stole us. You built this system up against us. All right. Uh, uh. Pillaged us, robbed us, murdered us, everything. You gotta get pay, you gotta get paid back for that, man. So ended on this, Revelation 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Alright, you captured us, the Lord's gonna change it around. We're gonna capture you. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. With that, all praises, honor, glory too. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles, Elders Great Millstone. And South Asian Brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth. And with charity, Shalom, Baba, Baba.